Well, how you doing, everybody? Today, we're going to take a quick look at A Quiet Place Part 2. Written and directed by John Krasinski and starring Emily Blunt, Millicent Simmons, and Killian Murphy. After a quick flashback that explains why the survivors from the first movie know who Killian Murphy's character is, this picks up pretty much right where the first movie left off. The Abbott family, consisting of Evelyn, Reagan, and Marcus, are still trying to survive on an Earth that has been invaded by these huge, powerful aliens who cannot see but do hear very well and hunt humans by sound. At the end of the first movie, they had discovered a way to actually fight back against these aliens by producing a noise that they really, really do not like, using a combination of Reagan's cochlear implant and an amplifier of some sort. And now they are trying to find a way to amplify this noise even more so they can eventually take back the planet and also protect their newborn, who, like most newborns, is not very good at staying quiet. This was the first movie that I saw in an actual honest-to-God theater since the apocalypse began last March, and of course the last movie I saw before everything shut down was Bloodshot, and... Thankfully, it was an early free screening and I didn't have to pay for it. Now that I am fully vaccinated and waited the industry standard two weeks after my second shot, I felt it was probably safe to actually get back into the theater, so I put up a quick Twitter poll and asked, what the hell should I go see? And A Quiet Place Part 2 won handily, so that's what I saw. And this served as a pretty good reminder of why I do and do not miss going to the theater. I miss it because seeing a movie like this on the big screen with the surround sound and everything is very enjoyable. I don't miss it because people are dicks. Twice during this movie, my first time back in the theater, twice someone's cell phone rang. People, do you not see the giant movie in front of you? Turn your phones off. The world is not going to stop spinning on its axis just because someone can't reach you for two hours. And this is all the more infuriating considering during the opening flashback where we actually see the aliens invading the small town that the Abbott family lived in, their position is given away while they are hiding out in a restaurant because someone's phone rang. That was a hint. But anyway, enough about the douchebags in the audience. Let's talk about the movie. Uh, this was very much like the first movie, which is both good and bad in a way. It's bad because it doesn't really break a lot of new ground. Uh, there are hints of breaking ground, but that's about all we get. We learn one new thing about the aliens, and that's it, and it's not even a major thing, really. We get very brief glimpses of other humans who have survived the apocalypse so far, and basically it's one group of assholes and one group of friendly people. And that's about all they amount to. And that's pretty much how it always is in a post-apocalyptic story, whether it's Mad Max or The Walking Dead or whatever. You got the friendly humans, and you got the assholes. And we got pretty much the same characters from the first movie, and not a whole lot in the way of character development. And even Killian Murphy is basically just filling in the exact same role John Krasinski played in the first movie. He kind of becomes a new father figure for Reagan. So that's the bad. The good is pretty much everything I loved about the first movie is still here. Emily Blunt, still awesome. Millicent Simmons, still awesome. And a deaf actress playing a deaf character. What a concept. Still suspenseful as hell and shows PG-13 horror can be done correctly. And it's amazing how much these movies can make you nervous by just the slightest of sounds. Uh, if you saw the first movie, you may recall that they had made these trails of sand between their home base and the town so they could walk around and get supplies without making too much noise. But there's a point in this movie where they have to venture beyond the sand trail that they set up and... They have to pause for a minute and really consider if they want to venture off this sand trail. And it's not like they have to walk on anything that's making a lot of noise. It's just a lot of leaves and sticks and stuff. But even that is enough to make them nervous. Early on in the movie, they take refuge in what appears to be an abandoned factory. And in this factory, they have these chambers they can use to hide in or just step in there for a moment if they need to have a private conversation. And... They show Killian Murphy putting a towel over the latch before he goes into one of these because they lock from the outside. 
And while he's in there, he also has a stopwatch going and he gets out as soon as it beeps. And you can deduce pretty quickly that what he's doing is timing how long he can be in there safely before the oxygen runs out. And as soon as they set that up, you know it's just a matter of time before someone goes in there and the towel falls off the latch and they get trapped. And oh God, what do they do now? And you know it's going to be suspenseful as hell while you're waiting and hoping that someone is going to come along and open that door before they run out of air and die. And that's really the fun of these movies. You know at any time something can go horribly wrong, and when it does, how are they going to get out of it? Or indeed, are they going to get out of it? Because John Krasinski didn't get out of the first movie. Overall, while it didn't break as much new ground as I was hoping for, it was still a lot of fun and I enjoyed it very much. If you enjoyed the first movie, I think the second one is definitely worth your time. If you haven't seen the first movie, I don't know if it's absolutely necessary because the opening flashback does a pretty good job of setting up the world and what you can expect going forward, but I would still recommend seeing part one. And that's all I have to say about A Quiet Place Part 2. So until next time, turn off your friggin' phones when you're in the theater. You jerks.